Our lesson on the Tuesday after the second Sunday in Lent comes from Mark chapter 11. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. In the name of Jesus. Our lesson this day comes on the heels of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Those who hailed the son of David riding into his city on a colt, did they know what they were getting in a king? Does this Jesus meet their image of what a king ought to be? Does he match yours? It's Monday. He's hungry. And he sees a fig tree that is not doing what a fig tree ought to do. It's not producing figs. Even though it was not the season for figs, the tree at this point of the year would have shown itself to be one capable of producing figs. And Jesus is not impressed with that tree. He curses the tree. May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And does the Jesus who curses the fig tree match your idea of what a Messiah should look like? Or what he should sound like? Oh, there's the image of Jesus the Good Shepherd and and Jesus the Friend of Children and Jesus calming the storms. How about this one on the visitor's brochure? Jesus cursing the fig tree. Faith without works is dead. We confess with the formula of Concord that good works certainly and without doubt follow true faith. If it is not a dead but a living faith, as fruits of a good tree. The disciples heard Jesus on this point. Do you? The word of warning is clear, that those who are born again and renewed by the Holy Spirit are bound to do good works. And the word of warning is clear. It's not to be understood as though good works are are an option for the reborn man to do as he wishes or that he could retain faith if he intentionally perseveres in sin. So Jesus enters into Jerusalem. He curses the fig tree and his disciples here, and he loves you in such a way, too, that you would hear to cut you down, to empty yourself of you. The Spirit of God continues to blow through the living word of Christ to forgive you, to give you life. And grace upon grace, in your repentant living, he has created good works for you to walk about in, good works to clothe your daily life with. Good fruit naturally follows and flows from a healthy tree, that is rooted in Christ and his life, the new life you have in Christ alone. Good fruit that does not have to look for mission trips or pilgrimages, doesn't have have to have its name on the church council or the altar guild to be called good. So what is good? Well, whatever you do for the least of these brothers of Jesus, also done for him. If you find one who's hungry, you feed him. You find one who's thirsty, you give him something to drink. You find one in need, a spouse, a child, a co-worker, an employer, and you love. Jesus knew what his disciples needed to hear and what you need to hear. A living faith produces living fruit. Jesus, continue to work in you what is pleasing to him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, continue to work in us what is pleasing to you. Continue to strengthen my faith through your word of absolution. 
through your supper and give opportunity and strength to do that which pleases you. Amen.